The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. There is a war being waged, not with guns, rockets, and tanks. The battleground is not the barren mountains of Afghanistan or the cities and villages of Syria. You can't call in the Marines to fight this battle. It's not that kind of conflict. It's a war of ideas and a war of values. It may not be on the headlines of your cable channel or internet news feed every day, but the battle is raging. And there are casualties strewn all over the landscape. What is this war? It's the war on the family. That might seem like an odd thing to say. After all, there are lots of families around. You probably live in one. And your neighbors do too. They seem to be doing okay. But look again. Look inside the family. Look inside your family, at the relationships, and you'll see in many cases a disintegrated, fragmented shadow of the family of even a few decades ago. Something's gone terribly wrong, and you may sense it too. What has happened, and where is the enemy in this battle? Only when we understand our enemy can we possibly win this war. The future of your family, the future of all humanity itself, is hanging in the balance. Stay tuned. Greetings, I'm Rod McNair with Tomorrow's World. Many of you will recall fond memories of growing up. I have wonderful memories of my childhood with four siblings and a dedicated mother and father. We lived in rural Wisconsin. Our childhood was filled with mealtime discussions around the dinner table, music lessons at our grandparents' music store, fishing trips with my dad and brothers, sporting events at school, and service in our church. And yes, even the drudgery of homework and garden chores. Looking back, I had a great life as a kid. My family gave me a foundation from which to chart a course into adulthood. What memories do you have of your childhood? I hope you can look back and treasure the times together with your family. Of course, I also have friends who did not share the blessings I had. Children who had to shoulder the pain of losing a parent to divorce. Other families ravaged by alcoholism and addictions. Some witnessed or suffered from physical or sexual abuse. Others had mothers and fathers there, but communication was strained or cold and distant and not warm and loving. The family grew, but didn't grow together. Even back then, many families were already suffering in this war on the family. You may have been a casualty. Maybe you saw your parents in a custody battle. You may have seen that firsthand the havoc that sexual infidelity can cause, or even domestic violence. Back in 1997, Glenn Stanton, a social research analyst, wrote the book, Why Marriage Matters. At that time, he analyzed the social landscape in regard to family life. He quoted researchers making some alarming conclusions about the family. For example, he quoted Nobel laureate Gary Becker as saying, The family in the Western world has been radically altered, some claim almost destroyed by events of the last three decades. Professor Lawrence Stone, family historian at Princeton University, said this, The scale of marital breakdowns in the West since 1960 has no historical precedent. There has been nothing like it for the last 2,000 years and probably longer. The author also mentioned Christopher Lash, noted American historian and social critic, who said, the family has been slowly coming apart for more than a hundred years. Mr. Stanton concludes on page 26 saying this, the problem is merely becoming more pronounced and impossible to ignore. If left unchecked, it will certainly lead to a disastrous end. 
Since 1997, it's only gotten worse. Just look at the facts. In 2002, the Gallup organization began an annual values and beliefs survey. It began asking questions on morality and the family. In 2002, 45% of Americans said they viewed having a child outside of marriage as morally acceptable. By 2015, it had jumped by 16 percentage points to 61% of people polled saying they view having a child outside of wedlock as morally acceptable. That means that well over half of Americans today think it's no big deal to bring a child into the world without the stability and committed mother and father caring for that child. It's about our sexual freedom to do whatever we want without regard to consequences. But who is thinking about the life of the child? Where is the outcry from government and social advocacy groups to protect these children from the financial, emotional, and social difficulties of life without both a mother and a father. And it's not just in the United States. These trends are all over the globe. In 2010, the Associated Press reported that across the European continent, out of wedlock birth rates doubled between 1998 and 2008. In China, divorce rates have climbed for over a decade. The International Business Times reported that in 2015, they occurred at a rate of 3.9% more than the previous year. In 2015, 3.6 million couples in China got divorced. That's staggering. Consider another major study done in the United Kingdom. In an article that ran in The Times on November 28, 2014, the author Rosemary Bennett reported, the number of children living with both their parents by the time they start secondary school has collapsed since the 60s. 61% of 11-year-olds share a home with both parents, compared with 90% in 1969. The study also reported, those with both parents under one roof report higher levels of happiness than those whose parents separated. More than a quarter of 11-year-olds in lone and step-parent families have behavioral problems, compared with just over 1 in 10 of those in homes with two natural parents. So no, the breakdown of the family has not stopped since 1997. It's only accelerated. And this is not even taking into account the scourge of abortion, the skyrocketing of online pornography, and a whole new wave of social pressure to accept same-sex marriage. The attack on the biblically defined family is heating up now more than ever. We're seeing nothing less than a social shift of seismic proportions. What's behind this? Is it just the normal evolution of society to throw out biblical standards with no more thought than taking out the trash? There seems to be an invisible force that is moving society to deconstruct marriage and the family. Where is that force coming from? We'll get back to that question in a moment. But first, let me offer you a brand new special report we've created at Tomorrow's World. It's called The Future of the Family. This special publication details how marriage and family have been eroding. We'll send it to you free of charge. Just ask for the future of the family. Call or write or click on our website. Ask for it today. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. 
Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. In the first part of our program, we talked about the deconstruction of marriage and the family that has occurred over the last 100 years and has only accelerated in the last couple of decades. But why is it happening? What or who is behind it? Ephesians 6 and verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There is a spirit world. There are angels that became demons when they rebelled against God. The most powerful of these beings is the one we call Satan the devil. Revelation 12, 9 states something very important. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Satan the devil is a deceiver. And the whole world has been deceived. What is that deception? Many things. But it certainly includes the importance of the family. It includes how the, the family is defined. Satan has deceived mankind about what makes a family work and how it should function. Paul described this same being as the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. That's in Ephesians 2.2. 2. The state of the family today, deconstructed and disintegrating, is the result of disobedience. Disobedience to God and His ways of life which reveal the way to true happiness. For singles, for married couples, for families, for children, for everyone, there's a way that brings stability to families and to nations. That's God's way. But why is Satan the devil against the family? Why is he warring against the traditional family unit? We'll answer that question in a moment. But first, let me again offer you our special offer on today's telecast, The Future of the Family. It's vital you understand this important topic. Click on the website, or you can write to one of our regional offices. You can also call us on the telephone. Just ask for The Future of the Family. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. Back to our program. We've seen there is an all-out war against the family. We've seen that there is a great spirit being who has deceived the whole world into disobeying God, including in regards to the family. But why would Satan the devil try to destroy the family? To answer that question, we have to ask, why the family? Who created the family? How does one define family? Is it just people who are living under the same roof who love one another? Or is there more to it? Let's look in God's Word for the answer. Genesis 1.26 says, then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So in the very first chapter of Genesis, we learn where we came from, and we learn what constitutes a family. No matter what governments say, no matter what the court says, no matter what social advocacy groups say, a marriage is made up of a man and a woman who are committed to each other for life. Going on in the chapter, we see the third element of family, and that's children. Verse 28, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God brought the first man and woman together and said, Go have lots of kids. That's family. 
That's how God defines it. Notice something else. While dolphins were made after the dolphin kind and snails after the snail kind and armadillos after the armadillo kind, human beings were made in whose image? In the image of God. Adam and Eve were made after the image and likeness of God with the potential of being born into his spirit family at the resurrection. As it says in Hebrews 2.10, he is bringing many sons to glory. But we still haven't answered the question, why does Satan hate the family? To answer it, follow me to Revelation. This passage describes something that will happen in the end of the age when Jesus Christ returns to this earth. In verse 1 of chapter 20, he said, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. Satan the devil is now ruling over this earth. He's the prince of the power of the air. He works in the sons of disobedience. He has deceived mankind far more than most of us realize. But his reign will end. A powerful angel will overcome him, bind him, and shut him up in the pit. Now, notice very carefully what happens after that in verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Did you catch that? Satan has rulership over the earth right now. That's something a lot of people don't realize. Satan is now ruling over the earth. That's why we see the suffering and violence and death around us. But Satan's administration will come to an end. Who will replace him? Resurrected human beings, the saints, the first fruits, God's people who will have dedicated their lives to God, had their sins covered by the blood of Christ, and will have proven themselves obedient to God's spiritual laws empowered by his spirit and they will be given rulership replacing Satan the devil. No wonder he hates the family. Family is the vehicle that God's using to bring more beings into the world to replace Satan. God is truly reproducing himself. Now we see the enemy who is seeking to destroy the family because through the family God is going to bring many sons into a spiritual family to replace this evil spirit. Notice one step further, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 5. For he had not put the world to come, of which we speak, in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You've made him a little lower than the angels. You've crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. Check it out in a commentary. You'll see that Paul has expanded the term all things to mean way beyond sheep and goats and all the animals on this earth. He's really talking about the universe. Man's destiny is to rule the entire universe. That's what it's saying. Under Christ, of course, and Christ under the Father. It's breathtaking. There is a supreme purpose for mankind to prepare for it in this life, to learn to submit to God and His laws, to have our sins covered by the blood of the Lamb, and to grow through the indwelling of His Holy Spirit and finally to be born at the resurrection into the very family of God. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What an awesome plan our loving Creator has put into motion. You can learn so much more about this than we possibly can discuss 
in this short program. That's why we're offering this special report, never before offered on tomorrow's world. It will open your eyes to the purpose of family and why it's in trouble here in these end times. Order yours today. Call, click, or write for The Future of the Family. For today's free informative offer, send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. Or call this toll-free number, 1-800-236-0531. That number again is 1-800-236-0531. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. In today's program, we've seen the state of the family. We've seen why God created the family, and we've seen why Satan wants to destroy it. I hope this short taste of God's Word and God's plan will give you added incentive to cherish your family. We understand that you may have a troubled marriage, or you may have difficulty talking with your teens. You may be frustrated trying to figure out how to work with your little ones. Don't give up. Invest your time and effort and thought into your family. Seek God's guidance. It matters to God. And if He sees the family matters to you, He will help you. What are some practical ways you can build your family and not fall prey to the attacks of the adversary? Consider these points. Number one, put God at the center of your family. God created you. He created your family. He created family as an institution to teach us important lessons and mostly to understand our relationship with Him. He's our Father. Jesus Christ is our elder brother. We are going to be born into His family at the resurrection from the dead as we read in Revelation 1.5. Don't eject God from your family. Invite Him in. Ask Him to guide you. If you seek Him, you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart. That's a promise from Deuteronomy 4, 29. Number two, fulfill your role. Children need fathers and children need mothers. They need both. Even modern research bears that out. If you're a husband and father, work on being the best you can be. Be faithful to your wife. Don't abuse her. Seek reconciliation when things go wrong. Humble yourself. Learn to say I'm sorry and really mean it. Be willing to change. Don't be bitter toward her. That's what Colossians 3.19 says. Love your children. Teach them, but don't provoke them to wrath. It says that in Ephesians 6.4. That means control your temper. Don't lash out. Always be teaching, not just reacting. If you're a young person, fulfill your role too. Follow Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Be supportive and respectful of your parents. God will see that, and He will help you navigate your life. Wives, mothers, work on being the best wife and the best mother you can be. Give your husband moral support. Admire him, lift him up. Don't be quick to tear him down. Be slow to anger. If you feel distant from your husband, talk with him about it. Ask him to pray with you. Let him know how important your relationship is to you and that you want to be a better wife. Ask for his help. Forgive him for his mistakes. Work hard to make your home a pleasant place of peace and kindness. Set the example to your children. It's worth it. Number three, 
set your heart to obey God. God set in motion laws that are for our good, laws that govern human relationships. He tells us to keep sex in marriage between husband and wife in a lifelong, committed, faithful relationship. Find out what the Bible says about family relationships. But don't take our word for it. Read it for yourself. He says he gives us his laws for our good. Notice Deuteronomy 4:40. You shall therefore keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, that it may go well with you and with your children after you. When we keep them, they keep us healthier, happier, more content, more at peace. Our lives are just plain better. Check into it yourself. Number four, prepare for the future. Jesus Christ is coming back to earth. And what's he going to do? He's going to reestablish the family unit as the building block of society. Read what Zechariah says in chapter 8 and verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets, and you and I can be there. And you can even have a part in bringing that world to pass under Christ and teaching families how to live and thrive in tomorrow's world. What an exciting purpose. What an awesome opportunity. And how blessed you are if you see the real purpose of the family so you can fight against that powerful being who seeks to destroy it. Again, don't forget to request your free copy of this brand new publication we're offering today, The Future of the Family. It will guide you through issues you're facing in your family today. It will give you encouragement how to successfully navigate through a world which is increasingly anti-God and anti-family. Call us today or request through the website. And thank you again for joining us. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World or watch us online anytime at tomorrowsworld.org. These are dangerous and challenging times for you and your family. You need the encouragement and faith and truth that comes straight from your Bible. Richard Ames, Gerald Weston, Wallace Smith, and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the good news of the coming kingdom of God, and the exciting end time prophecies and their meaning. Be sure to come back to the same channel at the same time next week. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.